Welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Happy spring, and I hope all of you are doing well out there. On today's episode, I had some free time this morning, and I thought I wanted to take uh, my camera out and bump it up to the highest ISO I have. I have a Canon 5D Mark II. I bumped it up to ISO 25,600. I wanted to take a couple snapshots, and then I wanted to experiment with Topaz Denoise AI and see what kind of a job it could do with ISO 25,600, which normally I could never use because the noise was just too bad. I couldn't get rid of it. Okay, so... But I thought, let's see what Topaz Denoise AI will do. And so I made some tests. We're going to do some pixel peeping. You'll see how the software works. And um, I think this is going to be an interesting uh, episode for you. So without any further ado, let's get started. I really wanted to test Topaz Denoise AI. I wanted to take it to the extreme, okay? So I pulled my camera out this morning. It's a Canon 5D Mark II with a 200 millimeter L glass lens on it. So it's a good quality lens. Um, I shot this at ISO 25,600. That's the highest ISO I can get out of my camera. And I'll zoom in and show you how bad it looks. Tons of noise and tons of color noise. Um, again, 200 millimeter lens, F16. Uh, this particular image was one a 2,500th of a second, so a really fast shutter speed here. But I wanted to get as much detail out of this image as I could. So let's go ahead and take a zoom in here. This is a 3 to 1. As you can see, all the noise in here, the chroma noise and just the regular noise, it's just really bad. But can Topaz uh, Denoise AI do something with this? We're going to find out here shortly. And uh, the other image I did was this one here. Hey, it's springtime in uh, Pennsylvania here. I live close to Pittsburgh, PA, but anyway, this is my backyard and some uh, high sensor coming up here. I think that's what they're called. Again, this was uh, ISO 25,600, the highest ISO my camera can go at. 200 millimeter lens, F16, 1,250th of a second. So let me zoom into this one here and take particular note of this particular flower right here because you'll see some interesting results when I do the denoise AI on it. But look at that noise in there. I mean, it's it's really, really horrible, right? I mean, if it can salvage this image, we all have to be pretty impressed, I think. Now that is the extreme, as I said. So uh, next I'm gonna go ahead and open up Topaz Denoise AI and show you the settings that I used in there. Here we are in Topaz Denoise AI, and I'm using version 2.0.0, which is the latest uh, version, which gives you batch processing now. They didn't have that before, but now you have batch process processing. If you don't have that uh, version, go ahead and download that version. Okay, very important. You want that batch processing. Okay, so here are my images here. And by the way, these are both camera raw images with no adjustments on them whatsoever, so they're straight out of the camera, all right? Uh, the image on the left is the original. The image on the right is with the noise reduction. Right now it's in the Denoise AI model. And this is super easy to use this program. And auto a lot of times is all you need. On this particular image, I'm not going to use auto because it's an extreme high ISO. 25,600 is high, the highest ISO my camera will give me. So generally that type of an ISO would pretty much be a throwaway image. But let's see if... Uh, Topaz Denoise AI can recover this image, okay? Now, I'm choosing the Denoise AI model because I think it's the best model. There's also an AI Clear model, which is great, and that's what they use in Topaz Studio too. But on an extreme situation like this with the super high ISO, I want to use the best noise reduction. So that's why I chose that. I'm not going to use the auto position, which it works really well. But the reason I'm not using it is because, again, it's an extreme high ISO. So I want to manually adjust this. So I'm going to click this on manual. When I do, you'll see what the auto settings were. It The remove noise was a 43. The sharpen was a 45. And the recover detail is zero. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull these both back the whole way off so I can start from scratch. And now, again, what you see on the left is the original. What you see on the right is the adjusted uh, denoised image, okay? So I'm going to start to move the remove noise to the right. 
and I'm going to move it up a decent amount here and just give it a few seconds to render. It's at 100%, so it renders out pretty quick here. If there's still a little bit of noise in there. I'm going to keep moving. Now I'm at 65. It's getting better. I think I ended up on like 86, which is right here. So there's 86. That looks really good. And I think my sharpening was at, okay, I took notes. I pulled my sharpening up. And you can see the image getting sharper. I think I ended up on like a 66. I was happy with that. And I thought that looked really good and sharp. Yeah, looking nice. And then my recover detail, I ended up pulling that up a little bit. Um, what did I do there? Like a 15. When you start to pull the recover detail up, you can start adding some noise back to the image. Like you'll see it here in a second. See that noise coming back in, but it pulls back some of the original detail. So if you want a little bit too aggressive on your noise reduction, you can get back some of that detail just by bumping this recovered detail up. Think of it as fine tuning, and I ended up with a, a 15. Now you'll notice here, I have select all checked. So whatever I do to the image I'm working on, and that's this guy right here, uh, both images are set the same, okay? So they're both at 86, 66, and 15. And that's a nice feature. Now you can process them independently. But in this particular case, I shot these this morning uh, for this test. And it was the same lighting, the same lens, the same camera. So I thought, well, I'm just going to keep the settings the same. So that's really cool. And that works out nice and it's fast. I did not touch the chroma noise reduction. I didn't feel I needed it. So I left that alone. But as you can see, you don't see any chroma noise in here. And then all you have to do is click Start Batch Processing. Now I've already done this. I just, uh, there's a suffix here, and it's it uh, defaults at denoise. I just added this 86, 66, and 15 to help me re to remember what settings I had my uh, adjustments on, okay? But you can save it to the source directory, which is really nice. So I'm um, saving it right back to the source directory where it came from. And also convert convert file format. You can convert it if you want to. I left it at no. If you click yes, like you can say, hey, do I want it to be a JPEG, a TIFF, uh, or a PNG or a DNG, which is a digital negative raw file. So I just it was already a raw file from Lightroom. So I said, uh, where was I at here? I said no. Convert file format no. So it remains a raw DNG file. Okay. And then all you have to do is click process. And you'll see right down here, the one time was 24 seconds. So they were each about 24 seconds. We're back in Lightroom and time for some pixel peeping. I'm going to use a really cool feature in Lightroom. It's found in the library module here in this it's this X and Y comparison. It lets you uh, pull two, Im two images up side by side and it locks them in tandem. So whenever you zoom into one and move it around, they're both going to be seeing the same area, which is really nice. It's great for comparing. Okay. So uh, let me click on my second image here, and i got to be in X and Y mode here, sorry. There we go. So the image on the left is my um, Topaz Denoise AI image, the image on the right is my um, original image. Now there's no adjustments on either one of these images right here. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to make the image on the left the original image, okay? So let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to zoom in to 3 to 1. And this, like I said, this is locked in tandem, but look at the details over here. You see no noise, and I'm zoomed in a three to one. I'm really zoomed in really far. So look at that. Look at the detail that this thing has brought back. I mean, it's like magic. I don't know how the heck it does it, but it does a heck of a job. But look at that. Look at the detail it brought back in here. It is truly amazing <laughs> compared to this over here. Wow. Let's click on my other image with the hyacinth. Okay, let's zoom out here. So the image on the left is the original. The image on the right is the uh, Denoise AI. Now remember, there's no adjustments on these. And now let's go ahead and zoom in three to one. And take particular notice of this flower right here, this hyacinth. Check this out. You don't see any details at all in here. Check it out over here. That is truly remarkable, isn't it? Like, look right here compared to right here. And it's doing other things other than noise reduction, I think. You know, this image on the right just looks better. You know, it's reinterpreting what the colors should look like and things like that as well. 
Because look at this color here. This is It has to take this and try to come up with the right color and things like that. Because don't forget, it's using artificial intelligence to do this. But wow, it's amazing. Let's go down to the dirt down here and take a look at the rocks and things like that. See that? Like, look at that rock there with all that color noise. And look at these pine needles. They look natural. Everything looks good. That is truly a remarkable job, in my opinion. Uh, I'm... It's, it's mind-boggling, actually. I'm going to get it back into normal mode here. Let's zoom back out. Let me go to the first image right here. Now, remember, there's no adjustment, so this is a raw image with just Topaz Denoise on it. So let's come over here to develop, and let's just hit the auto button here in Lightroom and see what it does. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Now, I can come and gave it some vibrance, so, you know, we could give it more saturation if we wanted to or whatever more vibrance probably less saturation I'm going crazy here that's too much vibrance but maybe somewhere right around in there that's beautiful let's go to our uh, second image right here this is the highest synth right here let's click auto on it Wow that is truly nice maybe give it a little bit more color or vibrance I should say but there it is hey Topaz Denoise AI, ISO 25,600. What can I say? It works really, really incredibly well. Topaz Denoise AI. This is version 2.0.0. Remember, this is the version with batch processing. So if you own Topaz Denoise AI, make sure you uh, download the latest version, 2.0.0, so you can take advantage of uh, batch processing. I had some free time this morning and spring has sprung around Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania here. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to take my camera out. I really wanted to put uh, Topaz Denoise AI to a test. So I thought I'm going to throw my camera on uh, ISO 25600 and see what it'll do. Now, these are just snapshots. These are not images that I would even probably process. But I just wanted to see what kind of results I could get. Can I use that high of an ISO with my camera? Because I'm a flower photographer and I like to uh, shoot flowers and I don't like to use a tripod if I don't have to. So I can use higher ISOs and Topaz Denoise AI takes care of me. So it's really cool. Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Hey, also, uh, if you want to save some money on Topaz products, I have an affiliate link in the description below. Uh, where if you use my coupon code of David Kelly and click on that link, that'll take you to the site topaz site where you can see all the different uh pieces of software and the different packages that they have and things like that and if you buy any topaz software again i make a little commission that helps me keep my channel going and i really appreciate it and i want to thank you in advance well i want to thank each and every one for joining me today on the joy of editing with dave kelly i hope you're all safe healthy and happy and i'll see you all right here next time but until then happy editing